السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمد للہ نحمد ونسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد اول پریز بی ٹو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ دا کریٹ آف دا یونیورس اینڈ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگ آف اللہ بی اپان پروفیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ آل دوز او فالو ہیز پیتھ ٹل دا ڈے آف ججمنٹ آمین تھم آمین ڈیئر بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز ان اسلام اللہ پیس بی اپان آل آف یو اینڈ مائی بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز ان ہیومینٹی دا نان مسلمس آئی آلسو گریٹ یو وتھ پیس اینڈ مرسی آف اللہ بی اپان آل آف یو And now the, the show, as you know, that it is a live Q&A show uh, in which you can use the telephone uh, through the, the, the line that is seen on the screen. You can use that for WhatsApp or you can directly call to me or you can, uh, after this show, this, the, the first uh, episode will be the discussion about this uh, Christian and an atheist talking about existence of God. So we will be uh, sharing some lights on that, inshallah. And also, uh, you have the second option to use the chat box to put your questions uh, on this. So let me tell you now, uh, before we start the program and before we take your call, uh, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Khairan. Uh, uh, I, I also miss you, Brother Adil. Barakallah Fik. Now, the, this first episode is all about Uh, the debate which has taken place between Dr. Uh, Brown and Michael Brown and uh, our brother Ridwan. And uh, Dr. Brown, Michael Brown is trying to prove the existence of God. And our brother, uh, apostate prophet Ridwan, is trying to prove that there is no God. And we don't need God. And he has got three main points on that. So inshallah, what I'm going to do is I'm not saying anything like I'm debating Radwan or I'm agreeing with Dr. Michael Brown or I'm disagreeing with them or no. It's nothing like that. It's just I want to also put my input into this to like this was uh, Dr. Brown was trying to pu- put his input from the Christian Christianity perspective. Bismillah. I'm going to put, inshallah, alhamdulillah, I'm going to put my perspective uh, from Islamic perspective, I'm going to put my input into this. So inshallah, hopefully it will be uh, good for the Muslims, non-Muslims, and especially this uh, show is uh, dedicated to Brother Ridwan. Okay, so let's start now. Let's see what Ridwan is saying. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for this debate. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for agreeing to this. Thank you, James, for arranging it. Um, I, I just want to say quickly, um, I speak German, Turkish, and English. English is my third language, so occasionally I might uh, make mistakes and stumble upon strange words. Uh, it's, it's because it's my third language. I just want to say this in advance so that I can lower the expectations and then... Uh, <laughs> just kidding. So today I want to argue that uh, God does not exist, that there is no God. Um, And to be very honest, I have a different approach. When I I look at uh, debates on whether God exists or not, and I look at how these usually revolve around things like uh, cosmological arguments and uh, all the other classical discussions that you see, I think they are a giant waste of time and usually play into the hands of uh, proponents of theism who want to uh, circle around those arguments. I don't want to approach the, the matter from that angle at all. What I want to do today is I want to talk about uh, three perspectives, three points. Uh, one is, what is God? The second is uh, the injustice and absurdity of God. And the third one is the, the lack of functionality of God. Now, first of all, what is God? Uh, okay, here you can see that he is talking about what is God, and he is proving that there is no God. And the second point, he is talking about the injustice done by God. And the third is that we doesn't need to believe in God. We don't need God to be believed. So these are his points. And main point for you people to understand is, focus on his arguments. His arguments are all based on historical information, that which he has studied and read. He has not done his, any of his research 
or his own uh, like you know analysis of his own like you know normally when you talk about the historians he's not a historian he's just a reader he reads and then he comes up with the conclusion when we talk about the scientist he's not the scientist so he doesn't you know he, he has not done any scientific research so all his b- argument is based on the materi- material which he has studied so we you have to be fair to listen to my argument as well because when i will be inshallah speaking i will be speaking from my uh, study and my source so and that i'm alhamdulillah i'm not boasting but i'm expert in that field so inshallah we'll discuss that so this is his main point he doesn't want to believe in god he doesn't want to he wants to ex- uh, prove that god is not existing and the main reason he's saying that the god is a god of injustice he does unjust thing you know injustice to the people so now he will be talking about his first point so i will speak about his you know when he finishes his first point i will give my feedback uh, when we were arranging uh, this debate uh, i believe it was uh, dr brown wanted to define what god is and the de- the definition that he went for was that uh, god is an eternal uncreated being who is also omnipotent omniscient and omnibenevolent so uh, almighty all knowing and ultimately good or the highest good the issue is that this is not really a universal definition of god that's not really true yes according to him it is not the universal universal definition of god like that that means he's all powerful all knowing and all good and all those kind of things so according to him that is not a universal definition but according to me anybody universally believe in any particular religion they believe that the god must have these qualities otherwise he will be like ordinary person so there's no objection to the believers of any religion hindu christianity or islam or any other religion if the god is of not not of this kind this quality then he is not said to be said as god so i agree with him universally for those people who are not believing in the religion but universally those people who believe in the religion they this is their definition it's not dr brown's definition it's not the muslim's definition but it is the definition of all those people who believe in the religion and those who believe in the real existence of the god True. This is this is Dr. Brown's definition of God, or uh, the definition of God that certain people abiding by certain religions hold. The universal that. definition of God does not exist and has never existed. When we look at human history, we see that we can track uh, certain signs that imply religion back about one hundred thousand years. Uh, what we was... now again, we can't confirm that. So it's only a material found in the re- re- written form. so he copies that he cannot prove it whether this statement is perfect and it is uh, there's no error in that or it's not inaccurate it is accurate he can't prove that so i can also read from the you know uh, study material and i can also come up okay this this is the old tree and this is the age of the tree based on this 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 we see is that there are some uh, almost clear signs of religion about 3 years ago okay but when... so now he is giving the date time or the period of the when when the people started believing in the religion that is also wrong the day one from the day one when the human started ex- staying in the, on the face of the earth whatever the way they had that was actually described whether it is in the bible whether it is in the quran whether it is in any other religious script the the humans from the very day the beginning of the human the religion was known then you can go back to any date of humanity we look at the growth and the evolution of religion what we see is that people initially only uh used depictions of animals for example or uh had certain a certain sense of worship of nature of trees or animals and things like that that developed that is afterwards but generally we know that when we go back to the first man adam from bible or from quran or from any other religious script 
we know that they were not having idols or statues to be worshipped. They were worshipping only one God and that's all. Then nobody known in the history of early stages of the human that anybody was worshipping snake or monkeys or you know, animals or stars or moon or sea, nothing like that. Into uh, pantheism and nature religions. Over time, uh, polytheism was established. The idea that there are many gods and, and many gods have different functions. Then uh, henotheism was established, which is that among those uh, many gods, only one superior god should be worshipped. Uh, dualism came into existence, which is that uh, the, the universe or everything, co cosmology is between uh, a higher good, light, and a lower evil or darkness. This is a very prominent idea that. Uh, was that that dominated Zoroastrianism, for example, or uh, Manichaeism, which was a religion that was around when Christianity was just uh, coming into existence or uh, growing in the, in the Roman Empire. Um, mon monotheism, as Dr. Brown sees it, came into existence very recently in human history. In fact, when you look at history, the first monotheistic uh, practices are not attributed to the biblical God, but rather to uh, Egypt, for example. The first signs of monotheism are thought to be coming from Egypt, from Akhenaten, who established a uh, religion that is known as uh, Atenism, where uh, everybody is meant to worship one superior God among many. And this is then called monotheism in history. Biblical uh, religion is only seen uh, to have come into existence about uh, 1000 BC. That's where we have the oldest remnants, the oldest evidence of uh, the worship of the one God as we know him. And uh, that this God is eternal, uncreated, omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent was also not an idea that necessarily came into existence at that time, but only developed over the last few thousand years. What else you can give the definition to the God? If somebody is created, then can the created God be God? No. There has to be uncreated someone, and that is how. So all these definitions which he is referring is not something it's newly known to the people. It's from day one that these characteristics were there uh, existing in God. Years. So what we see is that we have a very long history of humanity, well, over a hundred of, of over a hundred thousand years, where we can. Again, so humanity. He's talking about a uh, hundred thousand years, and then he is talking about three hundred thousand or three thousand or thirty thousand. He's talking about the new definition of God came into existence. That's all false because the day one. When human stepped on the face of the earth, God was existing in the mind of the person, the human, and they were worshipping one God. Uh, look at religious development, but this God, which we define as uh, omnipotent, omnip omniscient, and omnibenevolent, is only a few thousand years old. Now, does it really... No, it's not true. He reads from the people who did their research and they said that, okay, this religious belief came after this, in these many years. No, but alhamdulillah, as you know from any, any scripture, when they talk about the first existence of the human, they talk about the religion since then. So if he says 100,000, of course it is, the religion is known since 100,000. It makes sense that, that in this long history, uh, only this God is true, that, that this God... You may agree with me or you may not agree with me. But if you are agreeing with him and he is only reading and what he is saying is only read, there is no evidence, solid evidence to prove that. So the people who have done that research, they are saying that. So if you agree with him, then you also have to fairly agree with me. Because I'm also not claiming that I done the research. I also studied. So if he studied and you agree with him, then you have to also agree with me as well. God is the God that we're talking about. That this is what God means. Why do we trust this? Why don't we trust all the others, but we trust this one? Okay, definitely. If that is, that is the case, this is one point that he is saying that he doesn't want to believe in God. Because who, which God is the true God? Then I will give him a logical answer. Because, see, to know, if we know the logical answer, if we know the logical answer, then definitely 
uh, that can be applied even to know which God is true. फोन ढूंढने के लिए था मिल गया फोन मिल गया ठीक है ओके सो लेट हिम प्ले ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ इफ देर आर सो मेनी गॉड्स then how can we believe in one god and how can we say that this god is true and that god is wrong so if if the god of muslims are true then the gods of christians are false and if the god god of christian is true then the so is a is better not to believe in it that means god is not existing no that's not the truth now i'll give you a logical reason a woman she has got relationship sexual relationship with five people and i'm i'm using my decent language so i don't want to use something that at the end of the day people would say look these people are trying to teach us but look at their languages and i have got nothing against dr brown mike michael brown or our brother ridwan and it is just you know i saw this uh, james cuns have used this uh, his platform to use this debate so i just looked into it because i have subscribed to them so i just wanted to put my input as well so the first thing is that suppose if a woman if she is having sexual relationship with five people and she gets pregnant she gives the birth to a child now the five fathers being five okay now re- remember that being five fa- fathers of this child can we deny that this son this baby has got no father or not even one father because they are five more than one which means suppose if there are four gods five gods and we don't know which one is the right one so that according to his theory his conclusion that we have to reject the existence of god but logically you cannot reject the existence of the father of this son because at least one has to be a father that's why the son has come into existence the same way when we talk about the 5 10 20 100 gods there will be only one god who will be the true god same as and it has to be one and that definitely and and when you talk about the son or this baby of course this baby must at least one fa- go, father must be there that's where the baby is born so but if the more you have the parents or the fathers or partners it will increase more confidence in this belief that the son belongs to one father son belongs to one father same thing when we talk about many gods then this religion belongs to one god and that the, we have to find out which dna matches with this father the same way we have to find out which is the true god it does not mean that you if you can't find the truth you give up and you say god is not existing no you can't say no i don't know who is his real father so he was born without the father or the woman had no parents no uh, partners <coughs> you can't say that so that's the logical answer and we can proceed more i want to go ahead and come to uh what the existence of this god implies and uh, i want to talk about justice life sin justice afterlife hell and about how unjust this actually is what we see with this god that we are talking about with this biblical monotheistic god uh, we see that this god knows everything supposedly is all powerful and he is the absolute absolute good but think about it this god that we are talking about creates a vast universe so so vast such an expanse that we don't even properly see within the universe we only see a specific observable area within the universe and just in this observable area we see myriads of different objects that are completely meaningless to our eyes we see different uh, stars and planets and rocks and everything and it, among all of that after 10 billion years 
a tiny planet comes into existence and exists for over 4 billion years. And on this tiny little planet, in all that mess, we humans come into existence and we claim that all of that only took place because this God, this almighty uncreated God, just wanted to create us and wanted us to enjoy things. And uh, we were then supposed to live a short lives on this planet, uh, be held accountable for how we lived our lives and what we believed in. And after we die, we will, we, we will be rewarded rewarded or punished. And uh, the dark side of this is that this all-knowing, almighty, eternally good God creates us and then holds us accountable through our life without properly communicating with us. He communicates through some uh, ambiguous sources and ambiguous people in history. We are supposed to trust uh, those people somehow and believe in that God and then go to heaven. Otherwise, we will go to hell and burn there forever or be punished in some hell. How does that really make sense? And is that really just? Is that really a realistic expectation? It is, it is very odd, isn't it? And what's funny is that proponents of God present this false scenario that we are between believing and going to heaven or uh, disbelieving and going to hell. But that's not really the case. What we, what we have in reality is that we are supposed to believe one certain religion among so many different religions because that one certain religion is supposed to save us from the punishment in the afterlife that all the others will take us to if we trust them and not this one religion. Uh, now, can you really expect a Muslim, for ex if Christianity is true, can you really expect the average Muslim to be confronted with Christianity and to accept Christianity? The average Muslim will not accept Christianity because they were brought up with ideas that are completely different, completely in rejection of Christianity. They will not even think about whether Christianity makes sense or not. They will simply reject it. If Islam is true, the average Christian will most obviously reject uh, Islam. I am here confronted with God and I most definitely reject it, not because I know that it is true and I reject it because I want to reject it, but rather because I don't believe that it makes sense. Can I be blamed for that? And if hell does not exist, if we will not be held accountable, then why in the world would all of this exist? Why would God exist? Why would he be uh, omnipresent, omniscient, omni uh, benevolent, and why would he do all of this without showing anything? This is where I want to come to uh, the next Okay, first of all, see, when only when it comes to believe in the God and to follow the religion, and then you will be accountable for what you are doing, all these things are rejected by him. But before that, when he talks about 4,000 years the man was created and God created, he agrees with that theory. And before that, you know, 14 million, 2 billion, million and years and all that, he agrees with that, all that theory. Now, if he agrees with that theory, then what is the problem here? Why is he saying that, you know, after 40,000 years, then the God created us and he created in this world and then he told us to live in a certain way and then he's telling us that you will be accountable for that. For If you are doing this way, you'll go to paradise. If you don't do this way, then you'll go to hell. What, what? So he's rejecting that. Now, which shows that he is biased in that sense, which means he's speaking and choosing his own studies. Things which he is agreeing, accepting it, easy for him, he takes it and he believes it. Well, there is no evidence to that, but still he will accept it. And when it comes to his own understanding, he's saying that, yeah, I'm not rejecting God because I want to reject or I know about God and I'm rejecting it knowingly. He's saying that because uh, I don't understand. And then he brings the example of the Christianity that Christians will not believe in Islam and Islam, uh, Muslims will not be, believe in Christianity and all that. And he's saying that this is if, if I am not believing in this because I don't know, so will I be blamed for that? No. Let me answer to you this. First of all, my brother uh, Ridwan, I don't know, where did you get this idea that God is harshless and God enjoys punishing people for no reason. No, there's no way. And there are plenty of verses in the Quran. There are plenty of verses. And the most common verse, which I can just give you for your example, for your convenience and for my audience, 
there's a one verse with regards to the ability of the people and the accountability of the people because he says that why i'll be accountable for things which i i don't know why i'll be punished for something which i don't know to believe in to eat or not to believe why should i be punished for it so let's see chapter 2 verse 286 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this very clearly la yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wus'aha Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala will never never ever make a soul to do things which the soul is unable to do it that is very clear you are a body with the soul and Allah will not make you do things which you are not able to do that and if you are not able to do that you will not be accountable for that which means suppose if ridwan is not clear about the faith and he doesn't know which god to be believed which religion to be believed and based on that he makes up his idea that he doesn't want to uh, you know believe in any religion any god and that's why he became atheist and he said no god is not existing and he is then saying that if i'll be punished for that it is you know i should be blamed for that no my my brother ridwan you or dr brown michael brown or our brother david wood or you know anybody anybody who is sincere in whatever they believe in whatever they study and they come up with the conclusion unknowingly or knowingly if they come to the conclusion then that conclusion is actually based on the sincerity and based on the sincerity ya hamkallah based on the sincerity the accountability will be of that kind so suppose like the i have seen some some of your videos my brother ridwan that you compared god with dog your dog so it shows that you are not completely un- unaware of the what god is to other people and what kind of a god that they believe but you do know that's why you are comparing uh, people who believe in god with your dog i have seen some of your videos so that shows that you are not you know completely unaware of the what god is otherwise you could not reject it but i still I still give you an option my brother alhamdulillah maybe I don't know what is there in your heart and if you are saying sincerely that you don't know that you should be choosing one god or this god or that god or this religion or that religion you don't know that's why you are not and then you are thinking that you will be punished for that I'll say no nobody will be punished for that anybody who is unable to even understand the what is their purpose of this life definitely if they die god has got another way to judge them so don't worry about it so try to understand first of all there's no way that you will be punished because something you were not able to do it and you are told to do it no you are only told to do what you are able to do it and that too your sincerity is based on that then if you are unable to do certain things don't think that god will prove his injustice injustice to you he will never be unjust to you he will all the that's the reason why the whole world is made and why the people are given now if you are talking freely if you talk about christianity in christianity anybody challenges god he will be punished but god is not punishing you you have rejected christianity in islam if you reject Allah and you abuse if Allah wants to punish you he can punish you but Allah has not punished you Allah has given you the freedom so if Allah wants to punish you in on the in the hereafter he could have punished you here but it shows that maybe I don't understand you but Allah understands your ne- intention Allah knows what is there in your heart so based on that you are still safe don't worry about it and that is very clear second thing i will tell you 
when when you talk about that in this world we don't know this god has created us and then he made this law and he is asking expecting us to do this and that and he knows everything that this will be the result and now that's that's logical understanding like for an example you i don't know you are graduate or not but you live in germany because you said you speak german you speak turkish you speak uh, english and so it shows that you may be a graduate person but just tell me if you go to the university and you stand in the uh, university and there on the board notice board it says that these are the leads list for you to you know f- uh, abide by this and you will be you at the end of the your study term you will achieve the degree and you will pass and you will be successful and this is on the other column this is the list if you go by this then you will end up with you know cancellation of your degree course you won't get anything you will be unsuccessful or if you go beyond that you will be punished that does that mean the university is bad does that mean that the university is restricting you from your freedom does that mean and is is not clear to you no nothing like that and then you are saying that god sends some ambiguous type of people ambiguous type of uh, guidance and all that if that is all ambiguous to you then what is this uh, you know authenticity and accuracy of what you are saying maybe people can you know people of religion can say you are talking rubbish you are talking talking you know from the ambiguous sources you don't have your own foundation that's why you are confused and the easy way to run away is to deny so this is what you might be doing so that's not the correct way my brother alhamdulillah you have to have positive understanding of the god god is not something god has definitely this is this whole world is like a university and the do's and don'ts that god has asked us to do and live by that's god's principle and definitely the result will be based on what you do and when you say about this that does not mean that god already know what you're going to he knows what you're going to do that's between him and his knowledge you don't know but since you are sent into this world and you are sent with this column and this result is success and you are sent with this column and the result is your disaster and uh, ending with evil ending so all these things are given and choice is given and you choose and you come up with that one of the endings then it is not god to be blamed blamed that he is unjust or he is uh, doing injustice to you uh, the person who is following that he has to be either rewarded or to be blamed Alhamdulillah. So that's the second answer to your second point. Next point, which is uh, about the lack of functionality and the uselessness of God. I'm not a classical, uh, regular atheist. I only use the term atheist to describe that I don't believe in God, but I don't really identify with that. I usually pr- uh, describe myself as a post-theist. I think that God served a purpose in history, uh, such as uh, upholding certain uh, morals or the fabric of a society or uh, providing certain explanations to all the things that happen uh, in our nature. But God has now lost this purpose. God has become obsolete and there is no longer any need for God because there is no reason to believe in him and he doesn't really do us any any good. We don't need him. We, have, we, we, are, we, we are very uh, well off without him. If we look at uh, history, we see that God was used to explain certain things that happen, such as light or earthquakes. Even Christians themselves did that. Early Christians uh, wrote about how things happened to them. Even uh, St. Augustine of Hippo, for example, who wrote his his masterpiece, uh, The City of God, wrote wrote about how uh, it was not uh, Christianity which brought you know, uh, uh, unfortunate things to the Roman Empire, but rather it was the lack of Christianity which made them fall apart, for example. Or uh, the Bible, for example, explains uh, earthquakes or and, and lightnings as the doing of God as a punishment or as a warning. Uh, all the religions, different religions, attributed these functions to different gods. But what we see in reality is that over history, nothing that we attributed to God, nothing that we explained with God turned out to be the work of God. If we look at a, uh, at, at a list of statistics of things that we attributed to God, we see that 
zero out of all those. Zero percent brought us to God. Everything had a different explanation besides God. Different cultures uh, in history, the Mongols, the Native Americans, Greeks, Romans, Manichaeans, uh, polytheists, the Chinese, who were completely unaffected by God, had uh, their own explanations. And we, when, when we see that uh, God was just one explanation, and it is not really needed anymore. There is nothing in our world that needs God in order to fill the gap. Uh, we have explanations for everything without God. To certain things, we don't have explanations, but we try to find out the true explanations to them instead of trusting in God, which doesn't lead us to any solutions. It just gives us an illusion, which does not satisfy us. It only helps us for the moment. It doesn't really solve our problems of finding out proper answers. As I see it, uh, when we speak about God and when we... Uh, when we say that we need God in order to be good, that is uh, false. There are people in the world who have many different ways to find uh, purpose in life, to find meaning in life, and to turn their lives around. God is only one of those options. I'm not saying God is not helpful at all. I'm saying God is only one of those options. And we don't really need just God. What I see is that uh, when people claim that God exists, they are making a certain claim, asserting that they know that God exists, because that's what their religion tells them to believe in. It is much easier for me, much better, much more relieving to me to accept the idea that I simply do not know certain things, because then I'm being honest to myself, I'm being more th truthful, instead of saying, yes, I know, God did this, and God did that. Therefore, I believe that God is only a uh, part of a long line of things that humans made up because they didn't know better. And it is time to move on from that. Thank you very much. Okay, very clear. See, in early stages in his talk, he was saying that God is not existing. Even when he began his speech, he his main concern to debate Dr. Michael Brown is to say God is not existing. And now see how he ends up. He's saying that uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't know that God is existing or not. And I, then he's also saying, I'm not saying that, you know, we don't need God. He's saying God is not the only thing that we need. Just God. So he, you can understand he is, he is totally confused. Now let me tell you, <clears throat> 1400 years ago, the Quran has spoken about certain things. He's saying that in the past, uh, yeah, I'll take you to verse uh, 23 and 24 of chapter 10. And that is the answer. If you pay attention to those verses, you will know that what uh, he is saying, God has already said in the Quran that there will be a time where people will say something like that, that we don't need any more, you know, we don't need God. So at certain period, a certain time, they need God as 23. 23, 21, 24. Yeah, this is, this is the verse, 24. So I'll come back to this verse, but let me tell you, what is he saying? That in the past, people were saying that, you know, uh, all those things were happening in their life. They had nobody or they had no knowledge of that thing. That's why they were saying, okay, this God has done, that God has done. So they, they, they were, you know, supporting their uh, incidents with the name of the God or re re referring to God. So now we don't because scientifically we can find out, you know, this is the reason, this is why this is happening, why the earthquake is happening, why the floods are taking place, why the storms are taking, why the lightning is happening. So based on all this today, the knowledge that we have, we don't need God. And then again, he admits that there are certain things which we don't know. But that does not mean that we need God to, you know, tell us. We have to do our own study and people are doing and doing the research. But he is missing one point. Now, who made this term? God of nature. Somebody has said something. They don't say God, Allah or Jesus, but they say uh, Mother God, Mother Nature, nature 
and they say that this is a natural calamity. They say that this is a natural disaster. What does that mean? Now, they have no justification. All those scientists, all those researchers, all those uh, astronomers and astrologists and all those uh, uh, medical doctors and gynecologists and all those people, zoologists, all these people, when they study the whole, even weather forecast experts, all of them, they describe so many things and they come out with the theory and they come out with some of the explanations, but they don't know everything. And they are those people who say, you know, this is a natural calamity. This is a natural disaster. And this is mother of mother nature, nature of, you know, mother of nature, mother of, God, you know, God of nature. All these kind of words are used. And even, even so many scientists, which maybe he knows, I, and this is not my subject to educate him because he, th he thinks that he doesn't know. That's why he's saying we don't need God. Alhamdulillah, God does not need any one of us, whether it's Ridwan or anybody. So let me tell you that even those scientists who were non-Muslim scientists, they have at the end have admitted that there is a supernatural power existing beyond our scope. Though they may give the name as God or they give the other name, but they say that it is a supernatural power that we don't know. It's a nature. It's a power of the nature. It's something in the nature. Like that, they refer to that. And they, some of them also honestly spoken that the God is existing. The God is existing. There's a creator of this universe. There's a creator who is controlling and running the system. They have admitted it. So it's what I think he is referring, as I said, that he is speaking and choosing. And that's why he's saying, now let's come to this. What he is saying, there it is 1400 years ago. It's already been said by God that this is how the people will say. Look, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامُ حَتَّى حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَزَيَّنَتْ وَزَيَّنَتْ وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَزَيَّنَتْ وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغن بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون now this is what people today say that we have power over the things and we don't need the one who has bestowed this power to us. We can control everything. Look, the example of this world, worldly life, referring to the people who live in this worldly life, the way the lifestyle is, is but like a rain which we have sent down. from the sky that plants of the earth absorb, those from which men and livestock eat until when the earth has taken on its adornment. Earth has become beautiful with all this 
the design that we have and is beautified and its people suppose that they have capability over it there comes to it our command by night or by day and we make it as a harvest as if it had not flourished yesterday now that part when the earth has taken on its adornment and is beautified and is beautified and its people suppose that they have capability over it now this is where today we are if you see like you know 90 in 1990s and 1980s when i was in dubai it was all desert today now is one of the beautiful countries in the world and people have got power people have got you know uh people uh, if you see i'll show you some pictures see this was you know if you if you type you know united arab emirates in 30 years 40 years ago you will find that it was desert and now if you see the pictures you will find all this you know uh the the world is changed and now people think that they have done this and people think that they have the power to beautify it and they and subhanallah uh, our brother radwan i don't know how much he, he believes in the hollywood movies but if he if he believes in the hollywood movies he would know certainly he would know that there are so many movies have explained you know that the future will come where the disaster will happen and the end of time will come and all this beauty which people are saying they have the control over it that will prove to them that they didn't have any control from the day one it was allah it was allah who has sent the you know uh, water uh, on the face of the earth allah has given them the cultivation allah has provided them the you know source of provision allah has beautified the whole world allah has beautified all this all these beauty things that we see the man has not made from himself he has used these resources and the sources that allah has given to him but they don't actually believe in that they think that they have the power over it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they think that they have full control over it subhanallah then when they fall into like this and then they say we don't need god because we are god of our time then this is very clearly allah says when our our command will come which is again natural disaster and it will perish that all this beauty will be changed and now it's you can see on youtube only 5 to 6 years ago the red sea or the dead sea they call it in in uh, israel you see this this is not our documentary non muslims are making those documentaries and that shows that now that area has got holes you know uh, which are underground holes and that was before 5 years it was a place where people were enjoying day and night dancing singing swimming in the uh, on that beach and now even the insects are not found there so this is what allah is saying that's the natural calamity natural disaster so those who do not believe in god and the power of god they will say is a natural disaster it is because of the salt is melting water going inside it and this is no but they also say that this is the uh, handy work of satan done by the humans in the form of satan which some of the places the water has been dragged out and that's why this calamity is happening so again on the end of the day they have to accept it there's a handy work of satan with the support of the humans and look what it ends with it says this is how we make the signs clear this is how we make the signs clear so when now uh, move it down uh, when so if you if you go through those places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you even now i'm saying you this is example of uh, dead sea go and check on youtube you will find that is a 10 minutes documentary and it will show you that that dead sea is become has a few years ago it was a place where uh, people were you know thinking that they have got their paradise on the earth 
and they think that they, they can control everything over there. And now it is it has become in such a disaster that it is it shows that nobody was ever living into it. So this is my reply to brother uh, Ridwan that you God does not need you to accept him or believe him, and it makes no difference because you are. I I wish I wish that may Allah give you correct understanding. And then you come back to the, uh, you know, correct understanding exists. You may believe, come into understanding of the existence of God. And then you will realize all this nature. So all I say to you is that don't worry, you are still safe. And this is not, if you have studied from the non-Muslim, any Muslim sources, where a person like you did mention in many of your videos that you are being threatened of being killed your head will be chopped if you go to islamic country no my brother life and death is in allah's hands and if you're sitting in germany and if you want to die if your time of death will come nobody can stop you even germany cannot stop you so if you want to die you will die there and you may die normal death or you may die in any you, the way it is destined you can't stop that so this is again one of the evidence and the proof of the even all this the whole scientists of the whole world get together all the medical doctors of the whole world get together and all those surgeons who do the transplantation of the hearts all of them get together and they come out with this I challenge them. If they can come out with this, can they give life to the dead person? Can they prevent the death? Then if they can do that, then there are so many princes. There are so many princes. There are so many kings. There are so many uh, queens. There are so many rich people of the world. They want to live for long. They don't want to die. But they cannot because they, the scientists are, they're puppets. They can buy them, but they, the scientists cannot. So this shows that at least if you don't believe in the existence of God, at least you should know there is someone who is controlling the life and the death, which I say is Allah. Okay, I think I, think I have explained my posi position, but still I welcome you. If you have got any further discussion, my brother Redwan, or James, if you think that you want to discuss with me and you want to invite me with Dr. Michael Brown and our brother Radwan together, three of us, I'm ready to discuss with them. No problem. It's my open uh, invitation to all of you. Bismillah.